let's spend a day at Hansa Park in the north of Germany. This park has one of the craziest roller coasters in Europe, the Oath of Kanon, and this ride has a big secret. There's also Europe's tallest drop tower, Highlander, with a classic roller coaster that wraps around it, and possibly the best Gertzlauer Eurofighter I've ever ridden. All of this nestled in some beautiful countryside by the Baltic Sea. So let's drop in to Hansa Park. Good morning from Hansa Park here in the north of Germany. How impressive is this entrance section here? This is really lovely. So I'm really looking forward to visiting this park today. We've got a couple of huge Gertzlauer roller coasters to get on, some really interesting other rides as well, and, uh, and a classic Schwarzkopf. You cannot go wrong with those. So let's go and take a look around Hansa Park. So we've got this massive boat here, and as you can see behind it there, a classic Schwarzkopf loop. I'm really looking forward to getting on that. I do love a classic old Schwarzkopf coaster. But this is, this is a really nicely laid out sort of entrance area here. This is really beautiful. Well, apart from the scaffolding over there, but otherwise, yeah, well impressed with this. So this is the replica of a historical Hanseatic cog with steep stairs and narrow paths. Well, it says use at your own risk. I'm gonna take a risk. And straight ahead we have Schwarzkopf goodness. And a drop tower that I believe is right in the middle of the helix of that roller coaster. And there you see it, the giant helix of the Schwarzkopf and up going through the middle is the drop tower. How awesome is that? I'm looking forward to riding that later. So we're beginning the day on Nessie, the park Schwarzkopf roller coaster. I believe this opened all the way back in 1983. I do love an old Schwarzkopf. They always ride so much better than they really should for their age. They were ahead of their time, so let's go do it. Well, Nessie was an awesome classic Schwarzkopf roller coaster. Rides so well for its age. Uh, and a few really cool elements there. I mean, I love their loops because they are like, almost perfectly circular. So you do get some really heavy G-forces through them, especially on the exit. But the second drop, you sort of go around a corner, bank around a corner into a second drop and get absolutely thrown out of your seat, especially in the back row with those awesome, very simple Schwarzkopf lap bars. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I'll probably go back and get rides on that later. It's very quiet here today, so I expect we'll get on, uh, we'll get on an awful lot of rides and probably multiple times. That was just a station wait. So we're going to carry on exploring. This is such a random park, and now we're just on a bridge walking over the railway. I don't know if this actually just takes us out of the park or what this even is. I don't think we can go any further. This is such a cool place to explore, but now it's like we're back out into the city. How bizarre. Love it though. Yeah, it's not gonna stop, is it? No, just keep going forever. <laughs> just in some sort of infinity loop. Yeah. Well, the headline attraction here is the Oath of Kanan, and that's what we're going to do next. This is a huge Gertzlauer infinity coaster with lap bars and a rather terrifying secret, which I'm going to reveal after riding. Uh, my friend doesn't actually know what it does, so he's in for a bit of a shock. But how mad does this look? It is just a tangle of track. So into the queue for Der Schwor des Kanan. Look at the size of that building that encloses the lift hill. Not gonna lie, this is one of the rare times I feel ever so slightly intimidated by a roller coaster. But it's gonna be fun. Let's do it. Well, we're heading into the Karnan Museum. This is really nicely themed, this. Oh, down into the depths.
kann jedes Baumeister sein. Ein erster Hinweis darauf, dass die Legende tatsächlich stimmt. Das wäre eine Sensation. Das Atelier des Baumeisters, der vom König Erik Menwert gezwungen wurde, eine unannehmbare Festung zu errichten. Dort, die Zahnräder unter der Mitte. Es scheint, als würden sich hier weitere Mechanismen in diesen Räumen verbergen. Die Gänge und Räume sind einsturzgefährdet. Wir sollten unsere Ausrüstung hier zurücklassen. Taschen und Rucksäcke mitzunehmen, wäre viel zu gefährlich. Hier im Regal ist bestimmt noch Platz. Oh, ein Greifach. Well, where do I start with Oath of Karnan? That is bonkers. Absolutely crazy ride that is. And I think maybe the best Gertzlau roller coaster I've ridden. It's just an absolutely insane concept and execution of a roller coaster that is. So, um, there's a sort of, I was trying to pick up the theme, obviously, obviously a lot of it's in German. They do have English subtitles for most of it, which is helpful. The setup for putting your bag, in was quite interesting because there was a whole storyline behind it about how you can't take any bags up into this special chamber. Um, one downside was despite having glasses secured and tied we were told we had to take them off regardless so um, couldn't really see much of what was going on beyond that point but then we boarded the ride we got front row there was a sort of a, a crazy pre-show where each row got selected separately and the floor would light up and then a door would open and you'd walk through so it was all very dramatic and well put together and then you get on the roller coaster and now it's time for the spoilers so you go straight into a vertical lift, a Gertzlauer vertical lift. Uh, as you get about three quarters of the way up, a screen plays on the ceiling. I didn't understand what the ghost of the king said because it was all in German. But then there is a simulated chain snap where you just drop vertically backwards. Then it's probably the one criticism I'd have of the ride is that we've sat there for a little bit too long. Like you just sat on your back for probably about a minute before the chain started lifting us back up again into an absolutely insane drop. The drop, you know, you start inside, you end up outside. It's almost vertical, then twists out at the bottom. Really cool. And then just that series of elements that you see outside there. It felt like it sped up as it went as well. Like towards the end, it felt like it was almost out of control. Some really cool airtime. Uh, no inversions in the outside section that I really paid attention to, but it was such a crazy experience that I kind of lost track of where I was. Then you hit the brake run, you think it's over, and you have a little indoor, inline twist indoors to finish you off. So that's crazy. I need more rides to really process exactly what just happened, but yeah, absolute madness and really impressed. So we're about to ride this sort of Storm Surgy Rapids type thing with a bit of a pirate theme. Although unlike Storm Surge, you can ride this in groups of two, so awesome. And look at this chap. He's well up for it. Well Stortbeker's caper fart, if that's how you pronounce it, was fine. He's a bit like Storm Surge, just with much, much better theming. Quite gentle, nothing too wet either. Although as we skimmed the water at the end there and cockily declared how we'd escaped dry, a revenge bit of water just sprayed up out and got me in the face. So just don't be cocky, that's my advice. Well, we're about to board one of these and go ride a crazy mine. This is crazy. It is a crazy mine, isn't it? <laughs> So just ridden crazy mind behind me there, a, a fairly standard wild mouse coaster, very similar to Rattlesnake at Chetton, perhaps even identical. The layout was incredibly similar, all laterals, all heavy braking that thumps the lap bar right in your stomach. So yeah, we're a little bruised after that, but still happy to have done it. They're always fun, just that they're very much a one and done though. Well, we're getting the queue for Schlang von Midgard. We've got no idea what this is, but it's described as a fast paced roller coaster with periods of darkness, and that sounds good to me.
Well, Schlang von Midgard was a really fun little family coaster. Very simple, two lap special, but really well themed. With a little preso section, a train that looks like a Viking ship. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And look at these cool carved wooden whales. Like the attention to detail in this park is really impressive. Hi, I'm Neil Wolf, and you should like this video. So just ridden pony post, which is ridiculous. You ride around on these little horses here with a gun and shoot at targets. I don't know why this is a thing, but I'm glad that it is because that was really entertaining and weird and odd. So all of these plants are lights. I imagine this looks absolutely stunning when it's lit up at night. In fact, probably quite trippy too. Well, we were hoping to show you some views from around the park and the Baltic Sea from this huge observation tower unfortunately is closed and it's just sat up there not really doing a lot so that's a shame but we do have a massive drop tower we're gonna do later so we'll get the views it's just a shame i won't be able to share them with you so with no observation tower available we are going to ride the second of the major gertzlau coasters here escape of novgorod this is a Eurofighter. again i think it's got a few little hidden surprises so let's go do it again okay. and again it all looks so nice around here the theming and the way this park is kind of presented has really impressed me. Oh, we've got a log flume too. And there's usually more clearance than this. <coughs> and another creepy entrance. I hope those aren't the actual restraints. No, I think Imagine if these cool. these were the actual restraints. I mean, I know Gertzlaus are not the most comfortable rides, but still. Well, what an eerie queue line this is. Ooh. Into the dark we go. Well, just ridden Flucht von Novgorod or Escape of Novgorod there. And if Karnan was possibly the best Gertzlauer I've ridden, then this might be the best Gertzlauer Eurofighter because that was really cool. And don't get me wrong, there was a little bit of uh, the Gertzlauer rattle there, but that was just a really well put together ride. Much like a lot of the other rides here, very dramatic, very heavy on the theming. Uh, there was a whole kind of pre-show section then we dropped down into a launch which came out of nowhere a really punchy lsm launch the outside section that you saw there in the footage was was okay i'd say that was probably the rattlier section of the ride then you go into another show building and you have the vertical lift and beyond vertical drop inside and then a whole section is in complete darkness quite short but yeah that was uh, that was really good also a walk on queue so we're going to go back round for round two also worth noting though that like Carnan, even with securely tied glasses they still had to be removed uh, also the exit is about half a mile away from the entrance to the ride so to go back around for re-rides you've got a bit of a trek Well, this is the first. One way you escape Novgorod is via a slide. Let's do this. Sorry, it's really dark. Ah! Oh! <laughs> You're actually escaping the key building, so you actually have these crazy, like, labyrinths to get out. So I did the back road that time on Novgorod, definitely a little bit more shuffly and rattly there, but still a really good ride. It's so well presented, very dramatic, very heavy on the theme. I think that's a really good Eurofighter and uh, another really impressive Gertzlauer roller coaster here at Hansa Park. And they do really go to town here. They really go with the backstory and there's obviously a lot of thought and concept that goes into all their attractions. And yeah, I've been really impressed so far. So I'm going to carry on with our day. We've got one more sort of major coaster to do, a mine train and then a massive drop tower. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, Royal Dutchman, uh, I think we filed that under a cred is a cred. That was not very good. Uh, Ratley, painful on the spine and not that thrilling. Some he the helices there were kind of forceful, I guess, but yeah, that wasn't a particularly great roller coaster at all. However, what could be fun is this massive drop tower, Highlander. That's up next. Oh, I do love a spinning into in drop. Let's go do it. good well Highlander behind me there was a decent drop tower it held you up the top there for ages tilted you slightly inward so you were facing down slightly and then you plummet to the ground the only downside is that those views up there would have been lovely with the Baltic Sea up in the distance but once again had to take the glasses off regardless of whether they're tied or not the loose article policy here is way 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 too strict especially when there are multiple places around the park where you can literally just jump up and touch roller coaster tracks so a bit inconsistent there and hopefully something that Hansa Park Management can look at because it does take detract from some of the experiences for those of us that are of poor sight so otherwise though really good drop tower obviously don't blame the staff for that at all they're just doing what they're what they're instructed to do but yeah it's a bit too full-on I think from Hansa well from this construction here I would guess that Hansa Park are building an on-site hotel I can't imagine that's gonna be anything else it is apparently their best kept secret so they gave it a QR code. I would really love to see all this lit up at night. I bet it does look spectacular. There are so many like dragonflies and flowers that are all made of light. I imagine it looks amazing. Froth. So we decided to get on this little boat ride. I can't pronounce the name. It was quite complicated, but it looks quite cute, so we're on the water. So we did the little boat ride, that was quite entertaining, but you could clearly tell it was set up to be ridden at night with all those awesome lights that weren't on. Otherwise, quite a cute little boat ride. And then we did the pirate ship behind us there, and that did what pirate ships do, and they're always fun, especially if you can get on the back. Nice little lift out of the seat and all that sort of stuff. So just kind of wandering around and seeing what other little bits and pieces there are to do. But there's no doubt that we are heading towards Carnan for some more rides on that to kind of really seal the deal for the day here at Hansa Park. So let's carry on exploring. Well, a second ride on Oath of Carnan, and that really is just an insane roller coaster. Even when you know what's going to happen, that's still got such crazy elements. So we rode in the third row that time, and it really, really got pulled over that drop. That drop really is something else. It's, I think it's vertical, then you twist out at the end, makes it really forceful, especially with just the lap bars. The actual course itself is really good with some really interesting elements. Definitely shuffled around a bit more towards the back of the train, did notice that, but would lap bars make that a lot more easy to deal with though? Like, and imagine if that had the smiler trains with the over the shoulder restraints, it wouldn't be anywhere near as good. But that's just a lesson for Alton Towers. Put these trains on smiler and you get yourself a much better roller coaster. And heading in for round three. Well, ride three on Oath of Carnan. It's time to take its toll now. It's a, it's a tiring experience that because you are subjected to a lot of forces and a lot of mad elements, but that's such a good roller coaster. Like I say, the only criticism is that bit you sit on the chain lift. On that occasion, I actually counted the length of time between a stopping at the bottom of the chain snap sequence and rising back up again. And it was 28 seconds. And that's just a little bit too long, I think, because you was kind of sat there in a slightly uncomfortable situa situation on your back, not really doing anything, and not much is happening either. The music's playing, but there's no other kind of theming or visuals or anything. So I guess it's a mechanical reason why they do that, that that's the length of time it takes to reset the chain to bring you back to the top again, but that is the only criticism. The rest of that ride, 
is so good and at the front you really do feel the speed it just feels like it gets faster and faster as it goes around that's a really good roller coaster come out to Hansa Park and ride Oath of Karnan waffle time the paths here are treacherous So we're heading back for a second ride on Nessie, the Schwarzkopf roller coaster here, after I've just ridden a family flat ride and still had to take securely fastened glasses off. Their policies are baffling. So good to get another ride on Nessie there. You kind of got to take the Schwarzkopf while you can because there's so few of them left in operation. But just to highlight the sort of the weird policies here, that's an inverting roller coaster. Absolutely fine wearing my glasses on that. Um, nothing more than a visual check of the restraints either. There's no manual pull up to make sure they're secure. So, hi, I'm Paul from Luke Theme Park Adventures and I'm three foot tall. So another ride on Flucht von Novgorod, which was good. The only thing I didn't mention earlier, there's a really good jump scare towards the end. Um, more roller coasters should do that. Anyway, we're gonna finish our day off with a bit more Karnan because that is the number one coaster here. Well, here I am in a teepee because they just have these here at Hansa Park as well. Just had our fourth ride and probably final ride on Oath of Karnan. That's such a good roller coaster, and uh, I think it's delivered every time we've ridden it. They really build up the atmosphere well in the queue line. It's very dark, moody, has the kind of the smell pods and that thing going on, as well as you get into the, the main kind of show building. Also really atmospheric. You've got the sounds of cogs turning and all that sort of stuff. So I think they put it together really well. Even how they sell the baggage policy and the loose article policy to you is all tied in with the storyline itself so little things like that are always appreciated and they've got an absolute monster of a roller coaster here well that concludes our day here at Hansa Park in Germany and overall it's been a really good day I, I'm really a big fan of this park just from my first visit here it looks really nice, there's some lovely theming around, there's music in just about every area of the park. And they've put a lot of thought into the rides they have here. You've got a good mixture of classic and modern, two of the best Gertzlau roller coasters I've ever ridden. And on the whole, just a really good park. It's, I've, I absolutely loved it here today. My only gripe has been their very overzealous glasses wearing policy. And I understand if they're unsecured, fair enough, but when they're strapped and secure, I mean, no one's going to keep their glasses safer than someone who wears glasses because we're kind of screwed without them. So that's been a frustration. But the most important thing is that I would say I would heartily recommend coming to give Hansa Park a visit because it is a really lovely park. And I'd imagine lit up at night, it's even better. And I'm slightly jealous. That I'm probably not going to get to see that anytime soon. So if you can get down to Hansa Park, certainly do so. I'm going to leave it there for today, but thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to watch this video that I recorded at Hyde Park yesterday, that's up on the screen now. All right, take care. See you soon. Bye.